Richie made his career seems to be on the fast track to success as he won innumerable accolades for his first feature film, Amal, released in 2008. I know Maida is directing two feature films simultaneously. It's about a father who goes on a business trip and never comes home, and uh, the, the resulting chaos of the mystery. Um, uh, the mother and son and grandfather kind of left baffled. What happened? Why? Um, and it's, I mean, essentially a domestic drama um, with a tinge of a sci-fi element in it. I was, I was looking at some of the deleted scenes in Amal the other day, which is on the DVD, and there was a commentary on it, which I had done four years ago. Mm. And so I watched them with the commentary, and there was some really interesting stuff I was saying. <laughs> and just telling, like, saying, this is why we cut things, this is why, and I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, well, that's actually really good. So you forget. You, I think you go through things cyclically. Um, to me, right now, it, it's all about being able to live, live with myself and live with the work, which is a lot of also what I'll Follow You Down is about, mm. uh, is about the integrity of the work. Tell me what inspired you to write the story. Um, thematically, well, literally, I was at uh, picking up my friend from the airport 12 years ago, and he was not coming off the flight. And I started inquiring as to, you know, was he on the flight? Was the manifest? And it was right before 9/11, and they said they couldn't tell me whether he was on the flight for security reasons. I couldn't even verify whether he got on. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I found him, but there was an old lady standing beside me in the airport waiting for her husband. And she was freaking out because he wasn't coming off. Aww. And I realized, well, what if he never comes off? And what if she never figures out what happened to him? Her whole life may collapse. And then I did some research and found out this was a phenomenon. Uh, it happens to thousands of people a year, guys, especially guys who go, go on business trips and never come home. Wow. And you never know what happens. It started evolving into things I was thinking about, which was thematically, which is essentially the balance of uh, what you want to do in your life. The other project you have, I was just kind of a little blown away. You were like, I'm working on two right now. I was like, very impressive. So tell me, uh, what is Siddharth about? Siddharth is about um, a working class man in New Delhi. And uh, he ends up sending his son away to uh, work, his young son, bringing in some extra money and the son disappears. So he ends up kind of looking for him, searching for him. Uh, and he finds out that he may have been trafficked. Um, so it becomes a journey of uh, looking for him uh, despite the social and economic limitations based on his class. I'm going to ask for your perspective on, on the Canadian film industry. Um, my perspective is skewed because I have been lucky um, you know, to have two feature, two feature films financed through them. So, uh, actually, two, three. Um, Siddharth is not a telefilm project necessarily or, or tax credits, but it has other streams of funding. Whatever the system is, whatever it ends up being, I'm always going to try and figure my way around it. Mm -hmm. So th there's, an, I think, an adaptability you need as a Canadian filmmaker if you're going to survive, period. Mm -hmm. um, so in that way, I try not to evaluate the situation. I just kind of look at, okay, well, what is it and what, what do I really need out of this? And am I worthy of it? Um, I mean, I'm really privileged. I've, I've taken money from, you know, ta tax money, essentially, cultural money, and done stuff with it. And I, and I think there's a responsibility to that. And it also forces you to compete at a very high level. So I just, I always kind of look at, well, okay, what are the restrictions this year? Has anything changed and why? And how do I navigate that and still say what I want to say? Mm -hmm.